Okay, so this is our next lecture on uh, extensions of Mendelian genetics and looking at uh, other types of crosses. We've already looked at simple one and two trait crosses, and then we looked at incomplete dominance and co-dominance, and now we're going to look at sex linkage. Um, first of all, though, where did all of these genetic variations come from? How did they result of all this variation? Well, first of all, we have Mendel's um, principle of independent assortment. The idea that if you have one dominant trait, do you have to have all dominant traits? And the answer is no. And so it gets really complicated very quickly when you look at the fact that we have 46 chromosomes and um, 23 different types and all of the different combinations that we can, that can result. Millions and millions and millions of different combinations. Also, secondly, the principle of crossing over during prophase one, when those tetrads form between the pairs of homologous chromosomes and pieces of DNA genes are switched, so you can have eggs and sperm carrying very, very different combinations of the parent's DNA. And then random fertilization. You don't know which sperm is going to reach the egg. You don't know which egg with which variations is going to be um, ovulated each month. So lots and lots of different opportunities for variation. We've got a review video, so you can hit this link and watch the video right now. But I'm going to skip that and go forward here. Here's a good answer just to review very quickly. Which of the following sequences represents chromo chromosome number during fertilization? Chromosome number during fertilization. So which one of these sequences gives you fertilization? Pause for a second, see if you can come up with the answer. Do you think you know what it is? The answer is A, because that number N refers to our haploid number. And so we would have a haploid egg being fertilized by a haploid sperm. And we have a zygote, just to review vocabulary, a zygote, which is diploid. Okay. So the table below lists the typical diploid number of chromosomes of several different organisms. Which of the following is the best explanation for why the chromosome number is an even number in each of these organisms? I'll pause, give you a minute. Okay, you think you have your answer? The diploid chromosome number represents pairs of chromosomes from one parent, so it's always going to be an even number. That's why humans have a diploid number of 46, but our haploid number is 23. So we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. All right, so that interactive notebook page number is incorrect for us, ladies and gentlemen. We would be moving on to page 28, the next right-hand page in our interactive notebook. Anything that you wrote previous to this, you may be put on to page 26. All right, so how do we determine gender? How do we know what the sex of the organism is? In humans, we have male and female. We have 46 chromosomes, 23 come from mom and 23 come from dad. And as I said the other day in my lecture, pairs 1 through 22, numbers 1 through 22 are called autosomes. So the 23rd pair of chromosomes are your sex determining. Those are your sex-determining chromosomes. Again, if you have XX, you have two Xs, that's a female. And an X and a Y for that 23rd pair is your male. Okay, so there's a female. She has two X chromosomes. Now, where did she get those? Well, she got one of her X's from her mom. Mom only has X chromosomes to donate, so one X comes from mom. And where did the other X come from? Well, where do you think? It had to come from dad. So this is actually a picture of the two chromosomes, okay, two X chromosomes. So one she got from mom, and the other one she would have to come get from dad. So the genotype is XX, phenotype would be XY. So here we have what's called a karyotype. A karyotype is a photograph of 
your chromosomes during metaphase of mitosis. And they're paired up and arranged by size. So here are pairs 1 through 22. There's our autosomes. And notice they're paired from longest to shortest. And then the sex chromosomes are given last. And because this individual has two X chromosomes, it's a female. Okay. Um, and this is not right. This is not a male. This is a female. So what would a male's karyotype look like? That's what we want to look at next. Okay, a male gets one X and one Y. Well, where did that male get his X chromosome from? From mom. Because mom is XX, and so she can only give an X chromosome. The Y had to come from dad. Because dad, 50% of his sperm are X's, and 50% of his sperms are Y. Or 50% of the sperm carry X chromosome and 50%. So this is why you have a 50-50 chance of having a boy versus a girl. So sperm are going to contain either the X or the Y for the 23rd pair. The genotype for a male is XY. The phenotype is male. And there is an actual picture of an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. The Y chromosome is really small compared to the X. Okay, so a male karyotype looks like that, and you can see you've got one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. So, gender of children. Again, the mom only donates the X chromosome, and the sperm can donate the X or the Y. So, who determines the sex of the child? It's the father. All right, so we're going to do a gender Punnett square to see what percent chance you have of getting a female or a male. Okay, two X's, an X and a Y. And we have here 50% chance. This is why it's 50-50 to get a boy versus a girl. Okay, so really this should have come in first, huh? If this had come in first, you would have seen how to set up the Punnett square to, this, to prove why it's a 50-50 chance. Now, remember, probabilities start over every time. So just because you have the first child is a girl doesn't mean your second child is going to be a boy. Every fertilization event is a 50-50 chance. So you could have five girls or five boys or ten girls or ten boys in a row. It's not likely, but it's possible. So who really determines the sex of the offspring? It's the father. So based on only one on the sex chromosome in a typical human egg and sperm cell fertilization, the probabil probability of producing a female is 50%. So these are real likely test questions that you're going to see. Sex-linked traits are going to be genetic traits that are carried on the sex chromosomes. These are going to be um, genes that are on the sex chromosome. Usually, when a, sex link, a trait is sex-linked, we're usually talking about something that's located on the X chromosome because the X chromosome is larger than the Y chromosome. So, because it's on the X chromosome, they're usually found more often in men than in women. And I want you to think about for a second why that would be. Why would you have it more often, find these, these disorders more often in men than in women? Okay. Most of these sex-linked disorders are recessive. Okay. So women have two X chromosomes. So in order to, be, to have a disorder, a sex-linked disorder, you have to have received both of the recessive genes in order to have the disorder. Women, very easily, though, can be carriers. So, when we're doing sex-linked traits, we write X's and Y's to represent males and females. And it, this one is an example of an X-linked trait that is recessive. And in order for a woman to get it, what would she have to have as the genotype? She would have to have inherited both recessive. One recessive from mom and one recessive from dad. If she was a carrier, she could get the recessive from dad and get a normal gene from mom. Okay? 
So we're going to work some of these Punnett squares out. Let's see why it's so much easier for a male to have it. Well, a male only has one X chromosome. And so, how many recessive traits do they have to inherit? Only one. And it's much easier, probability-wise, to just have one. See, because as long as you have one normal, like for example, a woman who has this genotype, as long as she has one working gene, her body's going to be fine. She's not going to have the disorder because the body actually shuts off the defective. It's the defective protein. It just doesn't have any influence. But if you only have one version of the gene and it's defective because you're a male, well, then you can only make the defective protein. And that's why males have sex-linked traits more often. Okay, so let's see. Ah, oh, this is not coming out right. So, we're going to be looking, this is coming in all kinds of strange orders. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and I'm going to write here that um, B is normal vision and X with a little b is colorblind. So, we want to do a cross between a woman who is a carrier for colorblindness and, oh gosh, I'm just going to guess the man has normal vision, okay? So what would this look like when we put it together, okay? Now, for these sex-linked traits, you have to tell us if you have males versus females. So we have a female there who has normal vision, female that's colorblind. Is this a female or a male? Oh, it's a male. And with a capital B, is he colorblind or normal vision? Normal vision. Again, female or male? It's a male. Little b, colorblind. So we've got a 25% chance of getting each of these genotypes. But if I asked you what percent of their girls would be carriers, you would have to say, oh, 50%, because these are the girls. And half of the girls produce, would, the girls would be, have a 50% chance of being a carrier. Would this couple have a child that's colorblind? They have a 25% chance of having a child that was colorblind. Could they have a girl that was colorblind? Nope. They can't have a girl that's colorblind. They can only have a girl that's a carrier. There she is. Can they have a boy that's colorblind? Absolutely. In fact, each male child that they produce has a 50% chance of being colorblind. Okay? So let's see what this Punnett square really showed us. Ah, uh, okay. This one had us a male um, with colorblindness. I don't like the way these things all came up here. I think the Punnett square that we did was a little bit better. Things are all out of order. Okay. Baldness is a sex-linked trait found on the X chromosome. We'll work this one out together. To become bald, a person must have a recessive copy of the gene on every X chromosome. That means it's recessive. Okay. Predict the genotype and phenotypes of the offspring if a woman who has no history of baldness in her family had a baby who, with a man who was bald. So first of all, a woman, she's XX. Okay. She has no history of baldness in her family. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say... Since she's never had anybody who has any, had any baldness, she has both of the dominant traits. The man, the husband, is bald. So there's he's XY, and ooh, recessive is baldness. So we're going to put it on the X chromosome. So now we do our Punnett square. Okay, mom and dad. And now we have to recombine our X's. So this first offspring... Is it a boy or a girl? Yes, it's a girl. And we bring down those little beads. Is she bald? No, but she's a carrier for baldness. This Is it a boy or a girl? Ah, it's a boy. And is he bald or going to be bald eventually? No, because he's got the recessive gene, and this male won't be bald either. So what are the chances of them having a male child? Or a female child that eventually goes bald, 0% chance. But 100% uh, of their girls are the carriers for baldness. Okay? 
So, sex-linked disorders, things that are carried on sex traits or, or, or sex chromosomes. Color blindness, okay? So, can you see the difference between those two pictures? Can you see the number inside? Mm, I won't tell you if there's a number in there. There's a cool colorblind test you can click on. Here's some numbers that are you maybe can see or you can't see, depending upon if you're colorblind or not. Hemophilia. Hemophilia is a blood clotting disorder where your blood does not clot properly. And again, if I'm going too fast, you can pause and take your notes. Okay? And back in the day, hemophilia was really a life-threatening disease because it could have led to death because a simple scrape or bruise and you wouldn't stop bleeding. This was very commonly found in the royal families of Europe because if you were a royal, you had to marry somebody else who was a royal. Okay, so Queen Victoria and Albert. Queen Victoria was a carrier. That's why in this pedigree, this thing down here is called a pedigree. In her pedigree, Queen Victoria, notice she's got a circle because she's a female, and it's half-shaded because she's a carrier. She was a carrier. Her daughter was a carrier. Okay, and her daughter, daughter had a, a girl, Alexandra, who was a carrier, and Alexandra married Tsar Nicholas of Russia, and they had a son. That's him right there, Alexis, who was a hemophiliac. So, if the father is um, has hemophilia, so the way we would write this is we would say, Dad, hemophilia is recessive, okay? And a mom is a carrier for hemophilia, so she's got one normal gene and one recessive gene. Okay, what this is what their Punnett square looks like. Could you set it up? Hopefully, you paused the video so that you could see. Okay, and so. I, you know what, I, I made a mistake. It says father without hemophilia, so he should have been a big H. So, there we go, correct that. There we go, big H, little H. So, um, they have a one in four chance of having a daughter who's a carrier, a one in four chance of a daughter who does not have hemophilia, a one in four chance of a son who um, does not have hemophilia, and a one in four chance of a son who has hemophilia. Okay. Again, there's that example again. And here's another example. Father without hemophilia. Okay, and a mother who's a carrier. Okay. Here's one, father with hemophilia. Can you come up with that genotype? He's got with hemophilia, and mom is not a carrier. You should be able to do that Punnett square and show me what the Punnett square is. So this is what I want you to have worked out in your notebook. I want you to do both of these crosses here on your left-hand page in your notebook so that you have some samples, and we'll work more on this when we're back together again on Tuesday. And I think we're about there. Oh, common sex link. So hemophilia, colorblindness, and baldness. So there's Queen Victoria's family tree. So we have Queen Victoria up at the top. She was a carrier. She married Prince Albert. And they had a bunch of kids. And the kids, um, we saw Leopold, one of their children, had hemophilia. And you can see how... Um, how we saw it play out throughout the, the royal family. So their families got, uh, their children got married off all over Europe and influenced genetic trees all over the place. So if a human baby boy inherits a recessive allele from his mom, in which circumstance would he most likely show the trait? Look at that. Come up with your answer. Let's see. C, the allele is on the X chromosome. It's a sex linked. Okay. Pedigrees, we'll talk about this more next week. We're going to stop our lecture here. 
okay? Now you've seen a pedigree, but now you know how to do those sex link traits, so come in on Tuesday and have an idea of how to finish them up, okay? And we'll see you later.